little behind, Chris, but I apologize. But I want to introduce our keynote speaker now, Chris Tigner. Chris is the Global Chief Information Security Officer for PRA Group here in Glen Allen, Virginia. He has extensive experience in cybersecurity, information uh, technology risk management, international finance services, and consultancy organization as well. Prior to joining PRA, Chris was the Principal and Chief Information Security Office for Impact Makers here in Richmond. He's also been the Senior Vice President of Information Security for the Federal Reserve, Chief Information Security Officer for Capital One, Chief Operating Officer for WC Duke Associates, and was Senior Consultant as, as Accenture. Chris is actively engaged in multiple volunteer and pro bono activities, passionate about helping nonprofits. He currently vi uh, volunteers for IT for Causes, does a lot of pro bono security work as well. He served on many executive boards uh, for universities, cy uh, cyber firms, as well as financial institutions. And I believe the most important thing to, to mention about Chris, who did not put on his bio, is that he's from James Madison University, which if there's any JMU Dukes in here, I'm happy about that. There we go. Um, and I've known Chris for many, many years, and so I'm re it's really a privilege to get here, him to speak here. So if you can please help me with an applause, let's welcome to the stage Chris Tigner. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, let me just echo what Jake said. Let, let's definitely thank the uh, the vendors that are here and are sponsoring this. Without them, you know, our ticket prices would be a heck of a lot higher, and uh, we probably actually wouldn't be sitting here. But thank you all for coming out here. So when I was thinking about what do we talk about today, I just took a step back and thought, what are the questions that I'm asked most often um, as a CISO? And these days, in the last couple of years, it's typically not security. It's, you know, how do I, you know, what are the, what are the challenges we've got? You know, what are your suggestions? So I thought kicking off this conference, what I do is leave you with a challenge. You know, what's going to be your challenge to think about over these next couple of days, over the experiences we've all been through as a, as a global citizen in the last couple of years through this crazy thing called COVID? So, you know, let's look back at, at 2021. Um, it, it's really hard to believe, you know, that we have been in this pandemic state now for almost two years. I, um, you know, was one of the lucky recipients of a uh, job loss due to COVID. You know, when you're in the consulting business and you're working with hospitality firms and they lay off 95% of their workers, guess where their consultants go to? Um, so, you know, 2021 has been a crazy year with, we've got COVID going on, you know, who in the world would have ever thought, you know, we would be fighting over toilet paper. Um, you know, I, I can't say Walmart is one of my favorite places on earth, even, even before COVID, but you know, oddest experience, I'm pushing a cart through Walmart and a Walmart worker just comes over and throws like a, I don't know, it was a 40 pack or one of those mega pack here you go, last one we've got. And I'm like, well, I wasn't even coming in for toilet paper, but thank you. Uh, you know, just really odd. So, I mean, you know, we've got microchip shortages. We've got all sorts of wild, wacky things going on. Hurricanes, tornadoes, flooding. You know, suddenly we're working from home. Um, oh yeah, you didn't have enough to do with working. Now we're virtual schooling. People can't figure out how to zoom, blue jeans, chime, you know, WebEx, whatever it is, they can't figure it out. And then you add the security challenges too. If you haven't been zoom bombed, I must tell you, you have missed out on some great experiences. Um, wow, I just have to say, there's nothing like someone uh, zoom bombing a meeting, particularly if it's on a security topic and you realize whoever hosted it didn't set up a password. That, it's just, brilliant um, you know and, and suddenly I had believe it or not those of you who know me from years ago will really think gosh she's really lying here I had become a gym rat actually and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later but I really went through uh, it was like I was coming off of crack or something um, not being able to go to the gym um, you know, and then I don't have any hair to cut anyway, but those who, you know, did need their hair cut, my son was looking more like a shaggy dog than a teenager. So that was a bit crazy. My wife uh, attempted to cut his hair. He will never let that happen again. Uh, you know, then we're still trying to figure out this mask thing. Um, are we supposed to wear them? Are we not? Or 
you know, it's so hard to tell. I, um, I, I personally, being, being high risk with type 2 diabetes, I've already had my booster, you know, so I'm more concerned about those around me and like, geez, I'm probably not going to have this, but if I do have it, maybe I'm the silent carrier, so I better wear a mask so I don't give it to someone else. But, uh, you know, it's so much confusing information out there. And being sort of a data guru, you know, I've learned over the years that if you can take a set of data and you can twist it to almost tell any story you want. Do the masks work? Well, let me look at the mask data and I'll tell you how likely you are to get ransomware. What? <laughs> uh, it, you know, it, it's a crazy world out there. You know, speaking of which, we've got, you know, malware, we've got ransomware, we've got data breaches, we've got general hacks, you know, and oh yeah, Gartner is really labeled this year as the year of the great resignation. You know, people have really thought through, do I really want to keep doing what I'm doing? Maybe it's time for Chris 2.0. What's something different? Uh, I've been working at home. I don't really like it. I love it. My company is going to make me go back in the office. They're going to make me stay at home. I just want something new. So, you know, the estimate this year, I think, from Gartner is 25 to 30 percent of the IT workforce will actually voluntarily resign and go somewhere else. Uh, and for once, the primary reason is actually not an increase in pay. It's just different working conditions. Uh, and it's funny looking at some of the surveys and just having read a Gartner white paper on this last night, a lot of it is they just want something different. And in some cases, it's very minor, the reasons that they want. It's things from, well, I don't always want to work from home, or I do always want to work from home, or I only have a 22-inch monitor and I'd really like a 32-inch monitor. <laughs> Really? Wow. Um, you know, it, we'll talk more about that. But, you know, then we look at, okay, gosh, I've got to worry about people resigning, but at the same time, wow, I can't even staff the positions that I've got now. How do I find employees? How do I find consultants? How do I find contractors? So we've got that going on. Then you add some election craziness in, um, no matter if you're communist, socialist, Democrat, Republican, libertarian, insane, whatever your party is, you know, it's a little nuts. Um, people have just gone overboard, frankly, in every party out there. Um, and then, you know, we're just at this point where it's like we're trying to balance 15 things at once. So what do I hear the most about is just sort of this whole set of, this is just maddening. You know, I'm just to the point of total overwhelm. How on earth do I actually handle all of this? And so I thought what we talk about today is, you know, how do I actually survive all this? How do we keep moving forward? How do I keep my career moving forward? How do I keep my family? Well, I, I would say saying mine is already beyond that point. So, you know, just how do I sort of settle them down, keep them, you know, intact? Um, but then, you know, what do I do? So I thought, you know what? Maybe we should talk today about, you know, what do we need to take care of? So I'm going to leave a few challenges and, and kind of hit on five areas of things I think we should just think about and, and talk about based upon experiences I think we've all had. But, you know, I'll highlight a few. You know, um, the, the five things I want to talk about today are, you know, taking care of your team wherever you work, taking care of your community. You know, we, we all live on this planet. Uh, we all have different views, different experiences, different beliefs, but we all share one thing in common. We're here living together. We need to take care of each other. And then your colleagues in the technology and security community, what, what can we do to help each other? Um, you know, Richmond is a great town. I love it. Um, it's not huge. You know, what do we often do uh, as security leaders? Hmm. Who's Jem got over there working from him that I could poach? Uh, well, I pissed him off, so can't go out to lunch with him after I stole those two employees. So, ooh, look who's working for Renee. Let me hire her. You know, th this thing of just, you know, poaching and, and that, you know, there's definitely going to happen, but there's definitely better ways we can work with our colleagues and help out in the security community, help our pipeline of 
of people that we want to employ. You know, other than colleagues, you know, got to take care of yourself too. You know, I always, one of my mottos out of a book I read one time is, you know, it's not about me. Uh, it's not about me, but you do need to take care of your career. You do need to take care of your health. You know, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything, quite frankly. Um, so we, we take these, you know, kind of one at a time. You know, what do, what do we need to do with our teams? Um, sometimes we think, oh, okay, you know, let me throw a, throw a happy hour. Let's do this. Let me uh, get them a nice bump in pay. We're all good. Well, yes, but looking at some of the, the human engagement surveys that are out there from Gartner, from Forrester, you know, people just really want some simple things out there. You know, is someone just going to take the time to listen to me? Just not, yeah, yeah, I hear you, but just actively listening of what, you know, what's on your mind? Okay, yeah, really? Your main concern today is, and I'm serious when I say this, you, you, your family's running low on toilet paper? You know, you can't find, well, you know, the funny thing is, if the human, the basic human needs aren't met, how do you expect people to focus on taking care of tuning the intrusion prevention system or figuring out, hey, what's my threat in, the, in our cloud environment? So sometimes it's just the basic needs, just sitting down listening. Uh, you know, I start my day out every day. Um, it's kind of odd, you know, in my, my little basement office of just videoing and checking on my uh, employees. You know, hey team, how's it going? You know, we, we have a 10 minute stand up and rarely, rarely do we actually talk about work. It's more of, okay, Chris, what's going on in Austin? You know, and, and often it was phoning him on the, uh, he's in Austin, so he lived for about a week without power, no heat, uh, and this is a guy who decided, I don't need a car, I can live on a motorcycle. Um, so well, all of his neighbors were out sleeping in their heated cars. He was sleeping on the cold floor in his flat in Austin because sleeping on a motorcycle isn't too comfortable. Um, but just listening to him, figuring out, hey, what do you need? What can we get you? And strange enough, clean drinking water was a problem. So literally, um, Amazon to the rescue. Uh, we just sent in a case of uh, drinking water and he was like, you know, the happiest employee ever. But, you know, beyond listening, you know, just thanking people for doing their job. You know, we all have, in, in the security and the IT realm, there's those exciting projects that are fun to do, that are challenging. At the same time, you know, they're often the ones that get all the praise, they're the heroes, oh, thank you for implementing whatever you did. While at the same time, we've got other people who are just running the engine, you know, which is no less important. Uh, and sometimes just a simple thank you of, hey, thanks for tuning those alerts coming in and weeding that stuff out. You saved a lot of time. You know, I know you're working an exorbitant amount of hours, but thank you for doing that. You know, just sharing that thank you. Um, another thing I found during COVID that, you know, just be understanding of people. You know, this isn't a Facebook like or anything, but you know, just be understanding of people, find out, hey, okay, yep, your kids are home. I don't care that there's noise in the background. You know, that's okay. Yeah. Why do you think I'm locked in the basement? All hell is breaking loose upstairs in my house. Uh, there's a bit of noise, that's quite okay. Uh, you need to take an hour in the afternoon to go drop your kids off at, uh, at skating or pick them up from school, that's fine. You know, we're flexible. Um, not many of us are in eight to five or nine to five hours that, you know, we're clocking in and clocking out. Some maybe are, but where we can be, that understanding and flexibility. I think the other thing that I found interesting is that in some areas, um, looking at some of the, the Gartner data, and I'm not selling Gartner memberships or have any stock in them, maybe I should, but um, one of the things that was a theme was people don't feel like they're being stretched, that all focus on COVID has been let's get things up and running, let's not change anything, let's make sure we're uh, running a remote environment and it's secure, shut everything else down. So we've got some people who are just flat out bored and that was actually about 50% of the people that were looking to resign 
uh, this coming year is that they didn't feel like they had a challenge. So, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunities, even if our companies aren't stretching people, maybe stretch them to, you know, learn more, to volunteer some time, to do things in an area that they're interested in, but maybe the company isn't ready to take on. So there's plenty of those opportunities out there. And then we certainly can't uh, ever talk about a team without talking about money. Um, I think it's always a good opportunity if you can and, and you have the HR support to do it, I'm thankful that I do, to actually do some proactive compensation reviews just to take a look at, you know, hey, are we, you know, are we paying you what the market is paying, you know? And, and, and sometimes we're not, and sometimes we just need to, I think, be transparent with their employees and, and tell them, hey, look, the market's made X percent jump this year, you know, hey, here's what we can do to try to get you closer to that and share with them what are the benefits of, of staying and, you know, and support them one way or the other. Hopefully you can have that open, honest conversation uh, with them. But I think being proactive, the cost of recruiting someone now just from your own time is incredible. Um, at going through building a team myself, the amount of hours you have to pour into uh, recruiting, especially trying to steal team members from Jem over here, you know, he, good at holding on to people. Uh, joking. Um, you know, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of money that goes into it. So, you know, sharing with HR, hey, you know, if these people leave, you're going to have to hire more recruiters. You're going to have to pay more headhunting firms. You know, is it worth, you know, bumping their salary by $5,000? Or when he walks out the door for $5,000 more, let's pay $25,000 to refill that spot and then go through training the person so that they can leave a year from now too. So uh, for me, that's been a, a successful conversation, but I'd encourage you just, you know, think about that uh, approach and, and help support your team. You know, a big thing for me, and, and Jake mentioned it when he's up here, is, you know, community. Um, we all live and work in a great town, um, but it really does take the whole community to take care of itself. And, you know, I'm at PRA group now, you know, and people are like, what is that? I'm like, well, it's a non-performing loan um, company where we go and buy loans that people have not been paying on from, you know, credit card companies, banks, uh, typically non-secured debt. Um, so hopefully none of you are customers of ours uh, in the room. But, you know, it, I, I never thought uh, that I would ever be in this industry, but I was actually attracted to the company because it started 25 years ago with the founder saying, you know, there's a better way. We're all going to fall upon hard times where we're going to be out of job, uh, our income is going to be reduced either through a divorce, through a job loss, through medical emergency, and so forth. People should be treated with dignity, and we should help people pay this off, negotiate with them, and, and get a plan in place. So PRA was one of the first to actually offer plans of up to five years to pay something with, like, minimum payments of, like, $5. Now, still, it's not a sexy industry, you know. But I, I think it was a good example for me of, wow, we can give back. We can help put teeth in in the financial services industry because if someone wasn't collecting on this, everyone would just be taking out credit cards and never paying them off and thinking, who cares? Um, pay a couple bucks, have a bankruptcy, write it off and start over with some more uh, credit cards you don't pay. But one of the things that, that PRA definitely uh, was in sync uh, for me and I liked was, hey, let's get out there and make this a better world. So for me, you know, I, I think we need to make sure we're taking care of our community. You know, there's some awesome opportunities to get out and volunteer. And not going to knock any organization. If your way of getting rid of stress and way, your way of giving back is going out there and hammering some nails in for Habitat for Humanity, awesome. Do that. There's a lot of people like, no, my thing is I really want to be behind this keyboard. I blow off steam by gaming at night. Now, that's my son, uh, you know. 
And I actually have glanced down at the clock a few times and thinking about him. He's a freshman in college. He's um, majoring in unmanned aerial systems. Uh, kind of funny, didn't even exist when I was. Uh, he's doing a presentation this morning. And of course, I didn't suggest it to him, but it's kind of interesting the influence I guess my career has had on him. I'm like, oh, so what's your presentation on? He's like, oh, I'm talking about these two competing Chinese air drone light shows that took place in China. I'm like, okay, what are you talking about? Well, each show attempted to hack the other. And, <laughs> and one of the shows, actually, uh, someone uh, took a simple, almost like Amazon type device and did uh, radio frequency jamming and crashed over 500 of the drones in one of the air shows. So it was funny, the other show's group then apparently hacked and took all of the Bitcoin profit from the other. <laughs> but, but that was his presentation this morning, so he's, uh, he was prepping for that last night and was nervous this morning, so he should be done in about 10 minutes, I think, so we'll see how he did. But it's really cool, you know, so there's so many things we can volunteer for. One of the things I learned when I was at Impact Makers was there's a lot of nonprofits out there that really need some IT help, some security help. And you're like, gosh, what can I do? Well, there, there's different groups out there. You know, number one, thank you to all of our green shirts here today for volunteering and helping with RVA Sec. You know, it, if you've got someone, you know, who's a, a friend over at VCU or U of R, hey, I don't know what I want to do, get them to volunteer. Most of the universities now require some kind of community service hours. Bring them in here. Um, look out at places like uh, one place I volunteered is IT for Causes. You know, what did I do? I actually helped administer security awareness training for some local uh, nonprofits. Some of these, you know, 10, 12 employees helping set up No Before or Wombat security training, Proofpoint, I guess now. Um, helping administer for those and just helping out. So you probably don't want me using a nail gun out there helping build a house if you want to live in it. Um, but I'm probably okay administering security awareness training. So just think about how can I, how can I give back? Um, the other thing that I really think is, you know, mentoring. You know, regardless if you've got a year of experience or decades, uh, you know, I can really date myself here. But there is someone out there who could learn from your experience. Um, hey, how did you find that first job? You know, what classes do you recommend I take in college? Should I go straight in and get my graduate degree? Should I get a job first? You know, my motto is masters are expensive. Let a company pay for that versus paying for it yourself. But you know, if you've got that money tree growing in the backyard, you go for it. Um, you know, on that note, you know, are there opportunities to actually teach? Um, I, you know, uh, go up usually twice a semester to JMU and just voluntarily teach a, a class. And the topic varies. It's usually something in IT consulting or usually in the security risk management space. To spend about half of the time talking and then the other half just answering questions. And, you know, in many cases, just trying to ditch the podium, take the mic, and just sit on the side of the stage and just talk and find out, hey, what do you need help in? And, um, you know, connecting people together. A big theme of mine is always, whether it's work or whether it's with people, it's connecting dots. And it's figuring out, okay, I've got this problem, there's these potential solutions, how do I connect those together? And I think you'll find in our community, whether you're in a high-tech or a low-tech company, there is always someone in need of whatever skills you've got in our community. So, you know, if you're thinking, gosh, I can't figure a way to volunteer, you know, let me give you Jake's personal cell phone number. You just talk to Jake. Jake has got an opportunity for you in RVA Sec to help out. You know, and for those of you that do have money trees growing in your backyard, uh, or looking for opportunities, they're great places to donate. You know, I'm always a big uh, fan of donating time, but a thing I've certainly found in this pandemic um, is a huge supporter of local food banks. Um, this pandemic has hit people 
that even executives, I mean, if you watch the national news, local news, seeing people lining up for food because all of a sudden their company disappeared overnight and they didn't have food. So I think, you know, this is taking care of your community. The, the other is, you know, how do I take care of my colleagues? You know, for, for me, I think share the information you've got. You know, clearly I'm not up here, you know. Well, let me tell you about how we do our decisioning model. I'm, you know, we're not going to give away intellectual property, but information on, wow, I went through this painful transition from, you know, running five version old McAfee over to, you know, moving to CrowdStrike Falcon, you know. Wow, wish I had known this. Well, get in a, get in a local group and just talk about those things. Uh, I, I think, you know, I always tell people, um, and, and friends in consulting companies will probably, you know, th throw coffee at me or bottles right now when I say this, but there's nothing like free consulting uh, with, your, with your colleagues. You know, talk to people uh, about these things. How can uh, people help each other uh, from lessons learned. Talk to the vendors that are here. I look at them as real partners. You know, often some of the best recommendations I've come across for fixing a solution has come from a vendor, and it's not even a product or service they sell, but it's like, hey, you know, here's an idea. Let me connect you with this person. So don't forget those. You know, pull together in, in these local support groups. We've got RVA SEC, we've got different Virginia security groups. Uh, some, most of them are free, some of them are paid. If you don't have one, maybe consider forming one within your own company. You know, some of the larger organizations around town, Federal Reserve, for example, you know, has their own internal security community that pulls together um, on a set schedule of, hey, how can we share things across our 12 districts? Um, you know, and supporting your team and actually doing those. Many of these things now are virtual, um, so it doesn't take a dime of travel money. Uh, it doesn't take much in, in actually signing up for these things. But then, you know, the other thing too, people are tired of being at home. Um, I, you know, if I stare at one more screen sometimes during the day, I feel like I'm gonna flip a lid. Um, so it's like, hey, you know, are you comfortable? Can, you know, can we get together for coffee? Um, it's kind of funny, people when I was at the Fed looked at me like I had two heads because we had some employees that uh, my assistant, for example, was in Texas by herself, never went in the office. I'm like, hey, we're having a virtual lunch today. Get your lunch. We're going to do a video call uh, at noon and we're just going to watch each other eat and we're going to talk. And people are like, you are out of your freaking mind. You know, what is going on? Now it's kind of funny because it's like, huh, now we all do that. But it, just sort of that support and that chit chat of, hey, we don't need to talk about how bad this data analytics implementation is going. Or it's like, hey, how are your kids doing? You know, it's been a while since I've been out to the ranch. You know, and you still got that gator? You know, you're, you're still riding it? You know, <laughs> paying $800 a gallon for gas? Or, you know, what's going on? Um, but just keeping in touch and then, you know, my big thing, you know, connecting people and networking them. Um, you know, I challenge you today, you know, meet someone you haven't met today. Take the opportunity to at least introduce someone you know to someone else. Uh, I think those personal connections can, can mean a whole lot. You know, your career, you know, you're here today, training, conferences. I can't emphasize enough, you know, get a mentor get a coach. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got when I was a sophomore in college, um, I guess it was my neighbor's um, uncle ended up being the assistant dean of the College of Business at JMU. So he just sort of felt obligated to uh, take this poor country kid and take him under his wing. You know, one of the things he told me uh, I remember two things, actually. One was, don't go straight to graduate school. Get out there and learn something. These kids who come straight into graduate school can't apply diddly squat. That was his technical term. And then the second thing that he shared was, find a mentor. Always have a mentor until the day you die. And I hate to say it, this guy was close to his deathbed. Anyway, he still had a mentor. 
And that mentor ne isn't necessarily always someone older than you, but it's, you know, you can learn. So I have a couple actually. And, you know, and one in the, the security risk space and one in sort of just the leadership space. And they make huge differences when you need to go through major life changes of, whoa, we're now an empty nester. You know, we need to downsize. What do I want to do? Where do we want to go? Um, or you're going through, holy crap, you know, my job is going to disappear. Half of this company, this team I'm leading is going to go away because the industry we're serving is temporarily shut down due to a pandemic. So it's great to have those mentors, you know, in addition to being one, I highly encourage finding one. Um, and, you, and they change over time too. I, I will tell you that from my own experience. But, you know, when you're taking care of your career, look at different paths. Think about different things. I mean, you know, people ask me all the time, why did you go from leading a team of 200 to temporarily leading a team of 700 to 100 and now you're leading a team of, uh, of two dozen? Like, you know, your preferences, your strengths, they change over time. You have different priorities in life. And so for me, my job that I have now, for me, is absolutely fantastic because I get to keep my hands in the tech it's not a 25 hour a day, eight day a week job. I can spend time in the community, I can give back, I can actually find some time for networking. Jake and I were joking this morning, I'm like, Jake, I've actually got some time now to participate in stuff, I can do stuff. He's like, yeah, yeah, Tigner, you've been telling me that for 10 years and this is the first time I can get you to this conference. And it dawned upon me, Jake, by the way, I just realized, um, it, so I, hopefully we'll be at the Omni next year uh, because this conference always falls on my wedding anniversary. So I can think of at least 10 of the nine years why I wasn't here <laughs> for that. But if we're at the Omni next year, my wife will actually be here. So, um, but I'll commit now to Jake that I'll be here. But you know, think about different things, expanding your scope. So one of the cool things, um, you know, I'm stretching myself this year. I signed up to be an executive sponsor um, at, at PRA for uh, emotional wellness, helping people to take care of themselves emotionally, mentally. Uh, it's so important, you know, thinking differently, doing something different. You know, use this opportunity to go out there and retool yourself. You know, whether you're technical or not, there are so many opportunities, inexpensive, free ones out there to take training right now, to, to get some help, to you know, take a class virtually, to many now even in person if you're comfortable doing that. There are some that are extremely inexpensive, if not free, where they're just trying to get you know, butts and seats to actually say, hey, we've got a, you know, an in-person presence here. So think about those things. You know, and, it wouldn't be Chris saying something if I didn't put in here this connect piece, you know, connect with other people, see what they've got. You know, I, we are a small town. Again, we're, you know, I'm on my anti-poach uh, thing, not because I'm trying to, uh, to protect any of my employees. I literally have one Richmond employee. The rest are, are spread between Oslo and Jerusalem and Austin and Knoxville. But, you know, how do we connect and, and help each other out here, both personal and professional. And then the other thing is, um, you know, this isn't a, my, my son was joking, he's like, what's that logo for, Dad? What's that icon? Stick your tongue in a light socket? I'm like, no. This is actually stay current on things. You know, there, there's so many great podcasts out there. There's, it, it's information overload for sure, but find something, make it a habit. Um, you know, again, no investment here, not plugging anything. One of the things I miss the most about not going to the office is, whoa, wait a minute, where did my daily drive go? My podcast of what am I gonna do without my cyber wire? You know, how do I do this? So now my commute is 14 steps from the first floor to the basement. Um, I actually intentionally shut off, I, I add my commute time and in the morning, I do my commute before I even turn on my, my work PC and then, um, you know, in the evenings I do the same thing. I, I shut down, I then have my commute, and I'm able to stay current on those things. 
You know, and the last thing I'll talk about here, and really personal story, and it affects me, um, you know, you've got to take care of your health and all the different components of it, whether it's your, you know, your, your physical health, you know, making sure you're keeping in tune with, hey, what's going on with me? Am I taking care of myself? Am I using the benefits I've got? Do I know that, you know, what's my mental state? Um, you know, am I traveling a lot? Am I eating the right foods? You know, am I, what are those signs of something's not right? Wait a minute, why am I the number one user on the McDonald's app? Hmm, why did I get 52,000 points last week? Hmm, you know, so a personal story that several of you in here can personally uh, relate because we work together. I allowed myself to take on an interim um, senior executive role leading a massive organization and was traveling literally six days a week for about 15 months straight. And I was telling Renee earlier before we started, I get a call from my doctor. He's like, are, are you in bed? Are you okay? How are you, Chris? I'm like, no, I'm actually standing in my office, walking around, looking at downtown Richmond. I'm fine. He's like, go to the ER. I'm like, what? Your blood sugar is so high that you should not actually be humanly functioning right now. So, you know, and it's strange that I, you know, was in Richmond that day because I literally had been on the road for about 14 months straight. And so instantly I was put on insulin. Um, uh, you know, insulin is great at controlling blood sugar. It also sucks every calorie out of the universe and puts it right on your stomach and thighs. Um, so weight shot up. Um, so literally, I, my life turned upside down. And I ultimately learned, wait a minute, I've got to take control of this. Uh, I got a personal trainer. I dropped 50 pounds. Um, you know, no, COVID has kind of slowed that uh, decline down a bit. But, um, you know, my wife's not too happy that I've got my... Uh, treadmill taking up half the garage, but it's going to stay. I'll park outside. You know, really learn you've got to take care of yourself. You know, are you doing those things of, you know, relaxation and mindfulness, meditation, prayer, wh whatever your thing is, find something that you can take care of yourself. I find that so many times people are taking care of one, but not the other. You know, maybe they're that gym rat, but they're stressed out to the point that, well, I'm okay, I've only had 32 pots of coffee today, Chris. No, you know, let's, you know, you need to do something to relax, you know, whether that's exercise, whether that's mental uh, mindfulness or whatever, you've got to take care of yourself in order to be able to take care of those around you. So, you know, we will wind up um, here early, but, you know, let's talk about what's the challenge I leave you with today, and it's really five pieces. You know, how do I leave here and take care of my team, my community, the colleagues that I've got, my career, and my health. Those are really challenging things, particularly I think COVID has brought to mind for a lot of people where we often have a lot more time to ourselves, uh, particularly when the, when the Zoom call is over. What do I need to do? How can I give back? How can I make a difference? So um, with that, I think um, it's about five of the hour. Uh, what I want to do is give you the extra time back. If there's any questions, glad to answer. But um, I really want to give us that extra time to spend with these vendors that I cannot thank them enough for coming in here and sponsoring. They're a key reason that we're here. Um, as much as we hate those cold call sales and as many of those numbers that I have actually blocked on my phone, uh, you know, Jake could probably code the stuff himself. So, you know, I'll give Jake and, and Sulo a, a, a pass here. Those like myself, you don't want me coding the stuff. I need to buy it from someone. I need them to help me in that journey. So we're going to take this extra time and, and spend with those vendors. So let me ask, any questions, anything? Awesome. Well, with that, I think um, we're going to have a break from now until bottom of the hour. Uh, 1030. So spend that time, uh, enjoy some coffee, water, snacks out there, and spend some time with vendors and connecting. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.